In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, it is indeed a pleasure to be back here in the church and and doing the services once again, even though you did see me in the relaxed state in my backyard and doing some services from my office for two Sundays in July. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing everyone, as many as that are willing and able to come, in uh, the second uh, Sunday of September when we are able to hold our services once again in our sanctuary. It'll it'll be wonderful uh, to see you all in that way. Now, legacies. That's what I've been thinking about lately. Often I think uh, about the legacy that I will leave behind when it's my time to go. What have I accomplished? Where have I been successful? And where have I been an absolute failure? How will people think of me? What will be the things that my children and grandchildren will remember? What kind of adjectives will others use to describe the essence of my life? It's hard to think that a life can be summed up in one or two words. I hope that the words that come to mind with the people that I love will be words like kind, caring, generous, funny, funny in a weird kind of way, or maybe just weird. (laughs) Can you imagine? These are also the kinds of things that clergy think about in the transition between parishes as well, not just at the end of our lives. It makes me say, hmm. Now, there is a lot in a name, isn't there? Just say a name and listen to what follows that name in your head. Let's play. Donald Trump. Justin Trudeau, Barack Obama, Doug Ford, Father Jeff Brown, (laughs) Jacob, Israel. Interesting exercise, eh? Now insert your own name. Of course, the reading from Genesis speaks of a very famous person in the beginnings of his becoming famous. Now I'm talking about Jacob, who after wrestling all night with an angel of the Lord, who is simply identified as a man, Jacob at this point in the story only has 11 children, with the 12th yet to be born. Can anyone guess the 12th child's name? Can you? Well, if you guessed Benjamin, then you would be right. Jacob is taking his family to a new place for a fresh start, symbolized by his crossing of the stream, the Jabbok. And this kind of activity, as some of you may know, is not easy. It's hard to start again. It's hard to pack up everything you own and try to set down roots in a new place. Just ask any refugee or any immigrant, even if they are coming to such a beautiful land of opportunity such as Canada. It's hard to start over. What side of the stream does Jacob wrestle the man? Do you know? Well, it's the side that he is leaving, of course. That's where the struggle takes place, in the place that we leave behind. Before we go, we struggle within ourselves if this is the right decision. We struggle with how we think the change will affect our family. We struggle with the prospect that our decision to start fresh may ultimately become our greatest failure. We fight, we wrestle, we decide, And then we go. Notice how Jacob's struggle with the man ends up with Jacob getting a displaced hip. You see, my friends, the greatest wounds of our life come at a time when we are in the struggle of life, when we are in the living of life. This is also when the blessings come as well. Even wounded, Jacob will not let go 
Jacob will not give up. I will not let you go, Jacob says, unless you bless me. And here comes the power of a name. What is your name, the man asked. And Jacob is his response. And the man says, you shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel, for you have striven with God and with humans and have prevailed. Jacob was blessed, and he called the place Peniel, saying, For I have seen God face to face, and yet my life is preserved. And as Jacob, now Israel, limps away, we know that the wounds that we acquire on life's journey do leave a scar, a lasting tribute to the struggles that we have overcome. Life experience, battle wounds, lessons learned, a walk down another road, leaving the past behind, born again. Whatever you call it, the struggles of our life, which we may say is when we wrestled with God face to face, are the events that dramatically change us. We also know that Moses will wrestle with the power of God's name face to face before the burning bush when he is on holy ground, and he also will be blessed with a life-changing experience. We also know that Moses' experience of God will transfigure him with God's glory as seen in the radiance of his own face when he comes down from Mount Sinai. So then, what is Jacob's legacy? Jacob is the father of the nation of Israel. He is the patriarch of the 12 tribes of Israel when Benjamin is born. Benjamin will be the 12th. And Jacob's legacy only comes through struggle and perseverance. Now, you know, I marvel at the patterns that seem to coexist in our lives. So we have the the three stages of the pandemic, right? Stage one was like a living hell for us individually and us as a nation as well and us as a world society too. That's where the struggle has taken place. We leave it behind and go to stage two, which is a little easier after we have received the blessing. And stage three is where we can possibly live for a length of time in relative easiness, but in a New York minute, we can be back in the struggle again, trying to make changes and make sense of our lives. The stages of the pandemic are kind of like the phases of our lives, where we go back and forth from struggle to blessing and from blessing to struggle. And this also makes me go, hmm. Now let me reflect briefly on the gospel. Jesus withdraws to a deserted place by himself. That means he's taking a break, a holiday, as it were. So like me, who has just come back from holiday, make sure that you also get your rest. Make sure you also get your holiday. There's nothing like coming back to work refreshed. Of course, after a holiday is when a big event often comes. And for Jesus, it is the feeding of the 5,000. With nothing but five loaves and two fish, the multitude is fed. And what is left over is 12 baskets full. And many will say that in the ministry of Jesus, there is a full basket of life-giving bread for each of the 12 tribes of Israel, enough for the multitude of the world and more. Everyone ate and had their fill. Now that's what I call a blessing. I think that sometimes our legacy really is just in the living. It is in our endeavor to seek God face to face and struggle with the difficulties, get burned, learn a lesson, receive a healing, and then a blessing, and then carry on with the living all over again. Perhaps what I am trying to say can be summed up in this passage from the Gospel of Matthew. 
We shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Abraham knew it. Jacob knew it. Moses knew it. And Jesus knew it. Do we know it? Yes, I believe that we do. Amen? Amen.